Well, good morning, friends, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Renee. We're going to do a few things today. We're in the pantry right now. Um, I came through here yesterday. I always clean my pantry, my jars and stuff, wipe everything down and check all the seals and do all that good stuff about once a month. Because years ago, probably in 2016, I think it was, 15, I got infested with pantry moths. And let me tell you, they will destroy everything. But I had a bag of, um, a little paper bag of oatmeal. It comes with commodities. And I had it sitting up on my shelf. And I didn't use it for months. Well, pantry moths hatched in there. And they were everywhere. So I had to literally take everything out of this pantry and scrub the walls, the ceiling, the floor, all my jars, wipe down everything with bleachy water. And I did get rid of them, and I have not had them back since. But I contribute that to the fact that I am in here every month moving and cleaning and rotating and, you know, taking care of everything. But <laughs> I have not done this for like two months since uh, the end of April. And um, it was time. So yesterday I come through, and you'll see my jars behind me. All shiny and clean. I love it. I rotated everything because, of course, canning season is upon us. And I've got all my stuff that needs to be, that that's from last year's. And it's still good, absolutely. I'll use that into this winter too. And then I'll put my newer stuff that I can this year, I'll put that on this side. I'll show you. Down in there, which I got some started already, and on this side where all these shelves are. I will um, move stuff around and make room for it all. But anyway, I wanted to tell you what I got planned for today while I put my beautiful bone broth. I'm telling you, friends, that stuff turned out wonderful. I got to put that on my shelf over here. And um, I had a friend of mine bring me the most beautiful raspberries. I, she brought me a big bowl of them. And she said, I've got more if you want more. Absolutely. So I took her out to the garden and we picked a bunch of stuff. So we made a trade. Raspberries for fresh veggies. What a wonderful trade we did. Those are gorgeous. And then I got room on that shelf right there. I got a little piece of wood here that I laid down. So when I make more bone broth... I can um, stack those jars. And I do stack my jars, but you will see, um, let me move it so you can see it. I do stack my jars, but I always put cardboard or wood between them. Okay. Right there's a piece of wood and there's cardboard and cardboard over here. Let's see. <laughs> this is fun. Cardboard all through there. So I stack them, but I put cardboard between them. Now, I would never stack my stuff more than two jars high, and I don't stack my quarts. But stacking them that way, just so anybody was wondering, I've never had trouble with, with popped seals or anything from stacking them, you know, with wood or cardboard between them. So, today, okay, now that I got that put away, um, I want to do mini pizzas for the freezer. If y'all remember, those of you that are my age or older, I'm, you know, in my latter 50s, 50s, you know, you get up there and you forget. I'm 50, 57, because my husband, I know his age, he's four years older than me. Anyway, if you remember back when we were in school, our lunch ladies would make the pizzas, the um, miniature, I don't want to say miniature, personal pizzas with hamburger buns. 
And they were the greatest things. They used to call them tiger paws. I loved them, even when I was in school. I'm going to make some of those so I can freeze them for my grandkids too. Today is all about lunches anyway. And I'm also going to do some a homemade pizza dough and show you um, how to do them with your pizza dough. Also, I'll show you a little trick with your pizza dough that you can bake it. And you can just freeze it that way, you know, like par-baked. And then when you pull them out, then you can, you know, put your toppings on them and your cheese and everything and pop them right in the oven. So we're going to do those today. And um, I wanted to look over here because I got peaches over here. Uh, she brought me the beautiful raspberries, and I'll show those to you. But it wasn't enough. I don't think I have enough in the raspberries to make a full batch of raspberry jam. So what I'm going to do is I've got peaches canned up. Beautiful. And pints. So I'm going to take some of these and I'm going to chop them, I'm going to drain them and chop them up and I'm going to mix them in with those raspberries and we're going to make a raspberry peach jam. And it is wonderful. I've had it before. I love it. Now, if you have like frozen raspberries in the freezer or, you know, any kind of berries like that, you could unthaw them and uh, mix them in and use them. Use them up. It's a good way to use up extra fruit in your freezer too and in your pantry. So we're going to do that. And if we have time, which I doubt we'll have time to do anything else, because I do got grandkids coming today. Though Emma's coming and she's going to be, you know, watching them while I do my videos and stuff. So I don't think we're going to have time to do anything else. And so it's the pizza, the pizza, um, the uh, individual pizzas from hamburger buns and the pizza dough. And we're going to do jam. And as, been, as much as I got there, I probably got just enough for one batch. So it'll probably be about four pints of jam. But anyway, friends, let's get busy and we will do the jam first. Okay, friends, I thought about this and you know what? We need to do this pizza dough first before I do the jam because this needs to rise for about an hour and by that time our jam will be, will be completed with that. So we're going to do the pizza dough first, the homemade pizza dough first. So with that, we're going to do, I'll put the recipe to this in the description box too. We're going to, I'm doubling this because I'm going to make quite a few of these. So we're going to do two tablespoons of yeast. Okay. And with that dough book, we're going to do two tablespoons of sugar. And then we got two cups of very warm water. There's a put in there. All right, now we're just gonna let this set. I know I'm using instant yeast, yeast, and you don't have to do this, it isn't required, but I always just let it set for, you know, five minutes or so, at least until I see it start to bloom, so that I know my yeast is lively. I don't wanna put all my precious ingredients in there to find out the yeast was dead. Okay, so now that I know it's bloomed, I'm gonna do two tablespoons of olive oil in here. Okay, and now, start adding my flour to this. And I'm going to do about four and a half cups of flour to start with because it's four to five cups. Actually, I think I'm just going to do four cups because it's pretty humid out. And the humidity, believe it or not, it plays a big part in bread. With how much flour you need. Three. I need one more cup to start. All right. 
So there's four cups. I'm just going to leave that set right there. Put our dough hook on. Okay. We're going to slowly mix that. Oh, and I want to add two teaspoons of salt to that. You don't want tasteless bread. Ah, absolutely not. So we're just going to let that mix. And I know it's a little louder. But we're going to let this mix to make sure we don't need to add more flour. It doesn't look like I'm going to have to add any more flour to it. If I do, it'll be very minimal. Okay, we need to add just a little bit more. And I'm gonna add about a quarter cup at a time. I got my bowl there. We're gonna get this oiled up. And once this is all incorporated, then I'm gonna go ahead and just let this do my work and knead it for about five to eight minutes. And then we'll be back and we'll get this proofed and we'll get started with our raspberry jam. Okay, friends, this is done and ready to be proofed. It's beautiful. I didn't have to add any more flour other than that little bit that I added on camera. Look at that. A little bit sticky. That's all right. I'm going to make this into a nice little ball. We're going to smear it around in here. Flip it over. Put our lid on. And this is going to sit for about an hour to rise and while that's going we're going to do our jam peanut butter and mayonnaise hello friends Oof. i'm crushing these berries up before i rinse or before i drain my um peaches because if you're a little shy you can use water to bring it up to the measurement you need and i'll just use the juice from the peaches so I'm gonna crush these up first and see how many we get, how much we get. I need about three cups of them. So let's see. One. Yeah, there's three cups right in there. Easy. Okay, so now I can drain these. And then chop these up fine. In small chunks. Enjoy your sandwich. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it rubs it, wipes it on the floor. That's two cups, so I'm just gonna mix that right in there. I need another jar. I need two cups. Sometimes the pork up smashed down. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to break these ones up. All right. I'll get everything ready. And we'll get making this jam. Okay, friends. So we are all set. I have got my jam, my little bit of butter you put in there for froth control. I've got my pectin, and I use um, bulk pectin. So it, this would be equivalent to uh, like one box. And then I got my lemon juice and my sugar. So we're gonna get this going. I'm gonna put my berries in there. Beautiful. Turn that on. Let's see this one. I'm also going to put my pectin in there right away and my little bit of butter and we'll 
give this stirred up. And to this, right away, I'm going to add two tablespoons of lemon juice. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're just going to mix this up. We want to bring this to a boil. Oh my goodness, that scared me. All right, so we want to bring this to a boil. And I always let mine boil for about a minute and then I add my sugar. I've got my jars in here sanitizing because I didn't put them in a dishwasher. I've got dishes in there washing right now. So I just put them in a pot of water. You do want to sanitize them. The USDA says that if you're canning something that's going to take less than 10, 10 minutes or less, you need to sanitize the jars. Otherwise, you don't have to. So these need to be sanitized because we're going to water bath these for only 10 minutes. Now this is going to go fast once it gets going. But this will be beautiful. And that raspberry jam with the peaches and it's just wonderful flavor. And I didn't have to add any extra juice or anything. In fact, I probably had a couple tablespoons more fruit than what I needed. But I threw it in there anyway. And look at here. I've got a little piece of green in there. Won't kill us, but we don't want it in there. All right, I'll bring you back when this starts boiling. This is supposed to come to a rolling boil that you can't stir down before you put your sugar in. And you definitely want to stir this constantly so it does not burn to the bottom of your pan. So this is something that's going to take your undivided attention to do. Okay, see that is at a boil that I cannot stir down. So I'm going to set a one minute timer on this. Okay, friends, you, you won't believe this, but I did lose footage. I am so sorry. Every time I tell Alexa to set a timer, my, my camera shuts off and I have no idea why. But... What we lost was that I boiled that uh, fruit with the pectin in it for about a minute. And then I added all the sugar at once. And you want to add all your sugar at once and mix it up really good and then bring it to another boil, which it doesn't take that long, but you bring it to another boil and you also time that for a minute. And when, then that, and when that is done, then you're ready to jar it up. So that's where we're at. I am stirring down the sugar and then I'm gonna bring it to a boil and I'm gonna time it for another minute and then we'll be ready to jar this up. Okay, I am taking my jars out of the screaming hot water. I don't want to put water in my jam, so I'll go around it. And I got five out just in case. I think it's only going to be about four, but I got five out just in case. Okay, we're going to get this jarred up. are hot. This is beautiful jam. Oh, it's hot. Ok, 
Okay, I gotta move this with this because these are screaming hot. I'll slide this one over there. Look how beautiful that's looking in there. This is going to set up beautifully. You can already tell by looking at it. All right, this should be the last of it. Okay, so I got a little damp paper towel here, and I'm going to wipe the rims off. Like I said before, when I was making my beef broth, my bone broth, I said I don't use vinegar unless it's something that's greasy, and this isn't greasy, so and that isn't going to seal. I'm glad I discovered that right now. We're going to let this one sit aside for just a minute. I've got the other one jar, clean jar, and hot water in there. I got a little bit on the side of this that I want off there. Okay. So we're just going to go through and make sure I got this one. We're going to put our lids on here. Put our rings on finger tight. It's very, very hot. Oh, this will be such a beautiful addition to the pantry for the winter time. My family's going to love this. Okay, I think that this one should be pretty well sanitized. All right, now this is how we're going to do this. There we go. Perfect. That one, I'm just going to, I'm going to, probably toss that out because I don't even like using cracked and in broken jars for storage so it's chipped around the rim I don't want any more of that to chip into any food I may store in it so that one will go in the garbage okay that's good these are going to go right in the water bath canner And they're going to process, once they start to boil, they'll process for 10 minutes. Okay. Those are good. We're going to put the lid on these. We're going to turn this back on. Bring those up to a boil and we're going to time them for 10 minutes once they start boiling. And I'll see you back here, friends, when that's all done. Okay, friends. This is done. I'm going to get one. There we go. 
Look at how gorgeous that. Oh, they're all popping. Hear them popping? Beautiful. Those turned out gorgeous. And they're just popping away. That's music to your ears when you're a canner. Okay. Take a look at how beautiful that is. All right, friends. That's got to cream. That's going to stay there for the rest of the day. Now we'll get our pizzas done. We are ready to do this pizza thing. With these, I'm going to roll them out into my little miniature pizzas and then I'm going to bake them quick and then I par bake them because some of them I'm going to put in the freezer and then uh, we'll make some up because the kids will eat some too. And then we'll do the, I'm going to do the ones with the hamburger next. All right. I doubled this recipe. So we'll get 24. We should get about 24 pizzas out of that. Small ones. It's got it's a little sticky. So we're gonna put a little bit of flour on it. Roll it around a little bit. It's beautiful dough. About 24 pieces. There we go. Okay, so let me set this aside. Mr. Wayne is looking at me through the window. All right. So this one needs a little more. Roll these up in a ball. So now that we've got those rolled up, we're going to move it away from me so that I can A little. Let me get a little more flour. Let me put my flour back up here. You can see what I'm doing. Yeah. We're just going to roll them. They're, pop they're redoing now. Uh, not redoing, they're putting windows in the basement now. So that's what you're hearing. We're going to set those for 350. Okay? Get a little flour on that. Get them as round as you can. Lay them on there. One more flower. All right, you got the idea. I'm going to go ahead and get these all done. And then I'll be back and we'll I'll be done and we'll bake them off. What okay. I'm gonna make you little pizzas. Can you say hi? Hi. Can you wave hi up there? Yeah. I'm making you little pizzas. Pizzas. Yeah. Ooh. Little pizzas. You want to make pizzas down here? 
You want to come here and roll? You got to wash your hands. You wash your hands for me. Perfect. Okay, get up there, baby. All right. Okay, put your hands right here. And we're going to go this way. We're going to push it this way. And you're going to pull it back that way. And then we're going to turn it. And you're going to push it that way. Pull it back that way. And that's done. So now you take the fork and you poke holes in it. A little bit more. Right here. Okay, now we put it on our tray. Want to do another one? taste testers. These are done. So I'm going to put a few of them on here because, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We'll make an extra one, okay? And these will go in the oven and these will be for us to try. So all I do with these, you guys got to stay out of there. I won't have no pepperoni for the pizza. I'm going to put a little dollop of, and this is my no cook sauce, and I do got a video for it too. 
Don't take all of it. Okay, no, no. They're saying hi to your friends. Hi, friends. Hi, friends. <laughs> You guys like pepperoni? Mm -hmm. You like pizza? Yeah. I no have pepperoni at our house. You have no pepperoni at your house? No. Oh my goodness. Um, We're not going to have no pepperoni for the pizza either. Um, All right. Um, We're going to put a little bit. No, I know your hands are clean, but. No, 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 no. You are just a silly little boy. Here, I'll give you some so you're not di dipping your fingers in there. I'll give you some too there. No, no, don't dip your fingers in there, okay? I can put it. I These can... make darling little miniature pizzas. All right, so now we're going to do a couple of pepperonis, a couple of pepperonis. And that's all I'm doing is pepperoni. You can do whatever you want on here. You can even make these into little deluxe ones. And I'm just gonna put just a little cheese on top. I got the oven heated heating to 425. So in the oven these go. Beautiful. You'll be able to see how those turn out. So this one is ready for the freezer. Look at me, friends. <laughs> Don't those look nice? Okay, friends. These are done. And they turned out beautiful. Take a look. Gorgeous. And if you can see the bottom, maybe you can't see the bottom. I'll show you the bottom when it cools. The bottom's nice and brown and crunchy. We love them that way. The other ones are packed up and put in the freezer. It's kind of hot. I mean, hold, but see how nice and golden the bottom is, and the, it's beautiful. I think boys are back. Okay. So you're gonna be the guinea pig? Sure. Okay. You gotta stay over here. So I can see you trying them. Right. Right. Anyone you want. Oh, it's hot. You could cook them first and then put them in the freezer, but I don't think they'd be as good as, as you know, making them. It's just like buying a frozen pizza. It's not baked first. They're so good. Are they good? They're amazing. They're better than like store bought ones. Yeah, that's way better. We used to get the small pizzas like this one. I was young and in school. They were they were maybe about like that. And I loved the crust. I can never figure out that crust. I just can't figure was it. Was it like garlicky or something? It was like a. It was almost like a cross between the dough and the pan pizza crust. Huh. You know how the pan pizza crust is real crispy on the bottom. Yeah. And it's got that. It's almost like a crumbly dough. Yeah. I can't find a recipe for it, and I can't figure it out. I'm not that good. So if anybody knows a recipe like that, if anybody remembers the old school pizza, not the lunch lady pizza, not the square pieces, these were the small round ones. And sometimes they do them on hamburger buns and we're gonna do that too. I'm gonna make it the way they did in, our, in school. They used to, they cooked the burger and the sausage together. And they had onions and peppers in there and then they put it on the hamburger bun and they bake it and melt the cheese on it. And oh my God, were they good. I don't want to stop eating it. <laughs> All right, friends. I'm going to let the little kids have the rest of this and let Mr. Wayne try one. And then we'll be back because we're going to cook up some burger and some sausage. And we're going to make some uh, um, hamburger bun pizzas. We're going to do those for the freezer too. Okay, friends, we're ready to do our hamburger bun pizzas, but this one's going to be a little bit different. It's more along the lines of an open-faced pizza burger. So I'm going to show you how those are because those are wonderful for a make-ahead meal for the freezer. So we're going to do that. It's almost a cross between pizza and a sloppy joe, but man, are they ever good. 
I'm gonna chop up some peppers and onions to cook up with that. I've made these before. I've made them quite a few times before, but I haven't made them in a long time. So it'll be a treat for the family. But I, I, I need to start, you know, keeping stuff like this in the freezer for quick meals as much as my grandkids have been coming over. And then my daughter, of course, I always put a little extra in her freezer for her, just because I love her. I'm sure you'll have a mama that does that. Mamas and grandmas love doing that stuff. And I know people are gonna say, well, that's expensive for you. They help buy my groceries. When they find stuff on sale, they always get extra for the pantry or they'll, you know, go and buy stuff so I can make them whatever they want in their freezer, you know, and then I cook it for them. I do a lot of canning. My kids, what I do, they're always bringing me extra tomatoes to can because they all utilize that. So, you know, it's not like I, I spend all my own cash all the time to uh, stock freezers. And who wouldn't if they had the money to spend? You love your children and your grandbabies and you never want nobody to go hungry. At least I don't. And this, friends, is what I live for. My family and my grandbabies. I know I'm gonna use probably most of this onion. just putting it all together because I am going to cook it all together. Okay, I think that's going to be enough onion. Ooh, my eyes are watering. That's a strong onion. Put that right in there. I'm going to cut up this pepper too. I wasn't sure if I wanted to, but I think I'm going to. Okay, friends, we are ready. I'm going to turn my burner on. We are ready to cook up the meat, the onions, and the peppers for our open-faced pizza burgers. So I got, what do I got here? Two pounds. Yep, two pounds of burger. And I got it from my local butcher because my burger is in the five pound packs and I don't want to make that much right now. And then I got two pounds of his lovely breakfast sausage. I love this stuff. And we're gonna fry all this together. I'm gonna get this broke up and then I'm going to add the onions and the uh, peppers to it. And I'm just going to let it all cook together. Okay. This is all going in. And all I'm going to put on this is just a little bit of pepper. Because I'm not going to do any salt because... It doesn't need any salt because of the sausage. But it does need a little pepper. We love pepper. All right, so this is just going to cook down. And this is my big 17 inch skillet, and I'm in love with it. And for those of you who don't know or who are seeing my videos for the first time, I do have a link if you're interested in one of these 17 inch skillets, they're wonderful. I have a link in my description box. I get them on Amazon. And I will put this recipe, all the recipes today that I did in the description box for you as well. This is a good way to fill your freezer with some nice lunches. You can use these for dinner too. But these are our 
make ahead lunches. All right, that's just gonna cook down and I'll be back when this is all done. Okay, friends, so while that's cooking, it's doing good, by the way, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay out these, because I'm gonna make as many as I can with that, but I'm gonna just start with one package at a time, because it'll make 16 open face pizza burgers. Gonna lay these out. We're gonna have a few of these for dinner, and then I'm gonna freeze the rest so they can just be heated up. Now with these, I'm going to turn on my broiler and I'm gonna just lightly toast these. Okay? I'm not even going to put them way up on there. I'm just going to lightly toast them, so i got to keep a close eye on that. And this is doing really good. Nothing like filling your freezer with ready-made meals to make life in the busy time, in the busy summertime, easy. We have been so busy, and I'll tell you what, as much as I love to cook, when I work outside all day in my garden, and you know, the, all the project we're doing, the last thing I wanna do is come in and cook a big meal. So, this is perfect. And when it's hot outside, it's, it's nice to have. Just something quick and fast and it doesn't heat up your kitchen. Hello, friend. <laughs> All right. Look at I got two that got two of them that got two done. It's all right, those are mine. I love burnt toast. Burnt popcorn, burnt toast. I don't know what it is. I just like it. We are gonna pour some of this pizza sauce in here. I don't want this real runny, but I want it, you know, a little coated. I think I can safely put the rest in here. And scrape out that bowl. Don't waste it. Okay, here we go. That's gonna be good. We're gonna turn that off. It's heated up enough because it was hot to begin with. And we're gonna give this a little taste. I'll get down here. Mmm, that's good. Perfect. Okay, and I got more of my mozzarella cheese, so you can see what I'm doing here. So we're just going to put this meat on top of these buns. Beautiful. We're going to do a couple of each for us. All right. So, I, oh, you know what? Let me turn this on. I'm going to turn it on to 400 because the buns are already toasted. And we're going to put cheese on here. Well, get up there. All right. And these ones will go in the oven. 
these ones are going to get wrapped. I might put these in the oven just enough to get the cheese just a little bit melted. So they wrap easier for me. So there we have it. As soon as these are out of the oven, I'll show you how beautiful these turn out. And then off camera, I'm going to put the other package together. And then I'm going to get them packaged up. So I will see you back here when these are done and ready to try. All right, friends. These are done. And actually, I'll just, I'll just take it by hand and put them on here. And take a look at them, friends. Don't those look nice? And two of them would definitely fill you. And even you could serve it with a salad or just have them for a lunch, take them to work, heat them up in the microwave. They're wonderful. Perfect way to stock a little extra make ahead lunches in your freezer. What do you think? I think I better take some home. <laughs> They're good. Thank you. <laughs> They're good. Mm -hmm. They'd be good in your freezer, wouldn't they? Mm-hmm. You want some for your freezer? Yeah. Okay. I made a whole bunch of them. Nice and crispy. Mm-hmm. Those are open-faced pizza burgers. So tell them to try them. You gotta try them. They're good. Yeah. <laughs> she wants to take them home because they're rotten, you know. I just want to tell Elijah I got them. You, <laughs> Elijah would love these. Oh, he would. He'd like my other little mini pizzas I made, too. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a little bit of each. Oh, yeah, he'd love them. Well, okay, friends. We had a ball in this kitchen, and I even had a little help from Cece. I love it. I live for it when I can teach my grandkids how to do something. And she had a ball. Anyway, look at all this we got for the freezer. These are all the open-faced pizza buns. These are our individual pizzas. And then we did the beautiful jam, the beautiful raspberry and, and uh, peach jam. Now, I will put, except for, I'll put the recipe for the pizza dough for this but the toppings that's all on you and i will put the recipe for the jam the the raspberry and peach jam in the description box and i will also put the recipe for the open face pizza buns beautiful look at this is a nice addition to my freezer and my pantry and you all know my daughter's gonna get some of this to go home with her so she'll be happy too and my grandkids love it so did Mr. Wayna. Him and Tracy loved the open face pizza buns. So I want to thank you guys for taking the time to hang out with me in the kitchen. We had a ball. We were quite productive in what we did today. I will see you in the next video. And thanks for watching.